Hello, Matthew. Hello and welcome to a new Ukraine war update. When the war in Ukraine started, like 2022, I know that the war started like 2014 in reality. And I, was, I wasn't just Thanks. jumping on the train in 2022 and was like, oh, I do like videos about Ukraine. But I also did like a lot of the stuff you have encountered before, like the Battle for Donetsk Airport, for example. Also like teams like Azov or Aydar and like no new thing for me. I knew that these groups existed before. And uh, that's what like I think sets my channel a little bit apart. And as I said before, like, I can very much relate with the struggle because even if I'm like a German national, a German passport, I went to German school, German values, German flaws. My parents still are from the small country of Bosnia, like very little fragile country, only 3.3 million inhabitants. And as I told you, like they also denied us like our independence and existence, or they tried to. So there was like this big war when Yugoslavia fell apart. And even if I was a child, this war was like very impactful for me. And because like while everybody was fighting back in our home, like the people who were here were like from all sides, like we're Croats, Serbians, Bosnians, and like the parents were even talking together. They were discussing the war and they were pretty polite for the fact that there was a war. But late, later when they went home, like they talked to each other and their children listened, like how they really think. And the children portrayed like their view then on each other. So it could be sometimes pretty rough. And it's pretty quickly made me to ask questions like, why is this? Why is that? And then the war was the reason for it. And I quickly realized that. So it was always a huge part of my life. And so I came to my channel and also to my interest, like in your struggle in particular. So that about me. So no perhaps about you. So you're part of the third separate assault brigade. And yeah. how do you get there? Like, I assume you volunteered for it. And what role do I have within the brigade? Like, are you part of an assault platoon? Most of the time, I, I fight uh, in uh, Storm Infantry as sniper. Sniper, yeah. Yeah. At last last year, I was like anti tank javelin fighter, and uh, and so I mixed these two stuff. But now uh, th this year, I'm only fight as a sniper. Sniper, and that's interesting because like we don't get to see much sniper footage from the war. And I recognized your face before because like a few months ago, I already saw a video of you. So when I saw you, your face on Instagram, like I was, I know this guy from somewhere, and then. You also posted the video there. It was like this video with the sniper rifle. And you were like, I don't know what you exactly were doing. It was a pretty short clip. It was like you were providing security or there was a fight ongoing. Uh, it was a really crazy storm operation because uh, we we have task to liberate our land. But... Uh, we we know that uh, many many Russian invaders sitting there in trenches in three lines, and we must get rid of them. We haven't enough people to like uh, uh, speaking of logical or speaking of uh, NATO books how to how to fight. Uh, we break all the rules, and uh, we understand that sometimes it's very crazy mission but we we must did it we we all of us uh in most of the guys like maybe 90 percent 95 percent is the volunteer guys so we we ready to do crazy mission and uh very often the well-prepared guys volunteer spirit and uh, this crazy attack uh show very cool results uh so we we liberate for one day, approximately two kilometers, uh, and the enemy uh, enemy's power was uh, way way bigger than ours. We have approximately uh, twenty five people, but they uh, but uh, there was uh, 
nearly 100 Russian soldiers there. And we attack their position. Can you imagine such, uh, yeah. such things? Yeah, it sounds crazy because, like, usually you have like this one to two ratio. Like, you have to be three times the strength when you have to attack. And it's crazy that you still pull it off. And even successfully, like, it's one thing to pull it off, but it's having true. like success with it is like a remarkable thing. And uh, so, yeah, believe it or not, uh, we have no one, our guy die. All of them survive. We have only four injured uh, guys. So they all uh, still alive. Everything okay with them was one of the really craziest and the more lucky operation because we we act so fast and uh, act so professional. So uh, half of Russians just run away to the field and uh, another half was uh, like destroyed or uh, injured or be being captured. Uh, do they wear like Mobix or were they like more well-trained troops at that day? Like I think you call the boot types it was, it, was, it was different types yeah it was very mixed uh, mixed types of soldiers some of them was uh, very well equipped some of them even better than we but some of them was uh, prisoners uh, who volunteer agreed to fight uh, for freedom maybe or for money i don't know exactly but they yeah. were they were mixed i think a lot of them are also forced and they don't simply don't know better like they only have like what their government tells them and perhaps like they're under pressure and they're from very poor countries have uh, poor areas in russia and so they don't have like the access to the internet like we have so they cannot inform themselves probably and i see that sometimes they're also like you said very good equipped and also some are like pretty badly equipped like one video i saw up from your brigade was you captured like a most in nagan like sniper rifle like it's basically a world war ii weapon and like, how do you felt when seeing such a thing? Батя просто чемпидоры воюют на. Different emotion because from one side it's some kind of antiquariat, you know, but yeah. from another side it's very uh, it's. Uh, high precise rifle as well that's so what i also believe yes up to 800 meters uh, it's it's very good it's way better than uh, some soviet union this svd sniper rifle for my opinion so uh i would say that it's it's also okay but it was it was really funny the way funnier was moment was uh, if it, it's interesting for you when they attack our our position and we we destroyed them and we uh loot their uh, armored vehicle and we find out the katana sword there no that katana sword yeah yeah so, we don't know what they want to do with with this but uh seems like i think against us i think this katana sword perhaps like there's always especially like in the western special force community for example there's like this kind of warrior spirit they they always talk about and a lot of this warrior spirit is going around like the Far East Asian tradition, like of the samurai. And I often saw that like basically also Russian guys, like from Wagner or like from special forces, while they despise NATO, they also try to imitate them a little bit. So like yes. their gear looks like them, they make the same pictures and perhaps this has to do with this kind of warrior spirit. So that some brought this katana with like, and was it real katana? So it was sharp or was it like- No, uh, no, it thing? was like uh, souvenir, but st still those guys who was on this uh, armored vehicle, they was like uh, pretty old guys and uh, really? uh, just okay. some kind of homeless stuff. I, I don't even, okay. I don't even uh, think that they can read the book. So, uh, yeah, crazy. yeah, that's really crazy. Well, how do you become a sniper? So do you had like shooting experience before? Like looking at your profile on Instagram, it looks like you were in some sort of shooting club before. So is this correct? Did you uh, learn it way before you went uh, to the military? Not exactly. I was, I was fight, uh, on 2015. Are you already fought back then? Yes, yes. Oh, interesting. In Azo Battalion. And uh, there I just only start uh, being sniper. But then uh, I just I just doing real estate. I doing psychology profiling. I was far away from war. And uh, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I, ne I never shoot from anything anything else. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Because it the, looked at like... The beginning, at the beginning of invasion, I just, uh, I just uh, been volunteer as many other guys. 
and uh, then I decide uh, I should be a sniper and uh, and javelin. And how is it like to be a sniper in this war? Like, I can assume that it can be very stressful because, like, snipers are also always one of these like high value targets for the enemy. And like, especially like things like capturing is like can be pretty hairy for guys who are snipers because like you pick them off one by one, time off the time, and perhaps sometimes they even know you're out there. They don't know where you are, and they can get like hold the grudge on you pretty well so how do you deal with this i'm not as a classic uh, sniper as you can see they they camouflage in two kilometers from enemies somewhere else uh, i'm in storm infantry so uh, i also More of a man. Okay, yes, I, get it. Uh, i also uh, bring uh, to any mission my ak I must multi multiple multiple fighting with uh, sniper rifle and uh, with AK. So I'm in Storm Infantry right now. So it's pretty heavy to to yeah, okay, force weapon that. and with a rucksack full of uh, ammo and grenades. Yes, uh, because uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, I'm co I'm covering group who cleaning uh, the the trenches, the enemy's trenches. But uh, at the same time, sometimes enemy uh, enemies just appeared. They can appear maybe from 10, 15 meters from me. I can be with sniper rifle and then contact began from 15 meters. And uh, you should you should change your weapon like in computer games, maybe. Uh, and uh, many times I was I was lucky because I have I have this AK and I can shoot because it it uh, appears after one situation uh when it it was enemy storm and i was with sniper rifle and it was uh, like b bush there so we don't see enemies but they were maybe uh, 30 me for 30 meters from us and uh i was without a k because i was only with sniper rifle and i shoot like in first world war I shoot then yeah. reload, then shoot then reload and the It, it, it was really crazy. I, I, I feel so helpless because they were surrounded us. The enemy was out, uh, outnumbering us. And I was regret that I don't have my really automatic gun, some, something better. Is your awareness is generally like, because I think when it comes, for example, to drones, like, are you always fully aware of the fact that like basically every step you can make during the storm operations is actually being can be watched by the enemy and like there's always like the possibility that the drone can like crash into you anytime or they can drop a grenade on you how do you deal with this all operation i mean because yeah we we have uh, plans but sometimes when we need to cover our group which uh, which storm which which had had already fight and the uh, We should just uh, move on uh, very quickly and uh, support them. And uh, in this situation, we can be in very unpredictable situation when we don't know exactly what's going on. Okay, we, we have general uh, opinion about what's going on. But you see, it's very big difference to see the map, for example, and being yes, in, of, in of the course, field. Of course. And even even when, when we see this uh, battlefield from the drone, It's also different to be in infantry and fly of like course. a bird. <laughs> of course, I can very much like uh, guess that. Like uh, that's why I also like like the type. I like more seeing like the helmet cam stuff because like it's closer. Like the drone can get like detached very well, and uh, it's like different to see it through this cold lens, and it's very unpersonal. But like for you guys, it's like very real and a very real situation you're in there. All, all of this video that uh, you, you you guys uh, have opportunity to see it it can be last video of the author you know and uh, it's like legacy something yes left i see it the same way like you that's basically because what i'm why i do what i do because like it can't like a lot of people often sometimes have like misconception that if they watch so much videos from war that they'll somehow be ready for war but like that's not true 
like it can only give you at least a little bit of sense but even like the video doesn't show everything like it doesn't show like how you prepare it doesn't show in the most cases like the all the way you go to the zero line like sometimes it takes several kilometers till you are there in the first place and during this trip like so many things can happen along there And like, also, of course, like you cannot, you have no influence about what happens. But sometimes you want to record and nothing happening at all. So I always tell like the guys, like just record and what happens happens. Like don't try to get good footage because in the end, your life is also more important than like a good video. Yeah. So, uh, but I think your brigade is like very head on with this. Like you're doing like a very good job, and I think very many militaries can like look at you and the way you do it like for the future because like you are very innovative when it comes to this like i don't know of like any military in the world that like does this thing well how do you prepare for like such a source? Like, do you mentally prepare before? Like, do you have some reoccurring uh, rituals? Perhaps do you listening to music or going to eat something you always eat? Like, is there something like this for you? Preparing for what? For the assault. Like, for example, you know, like, perhaps to tomorrow we will have an attack. Like, we will attack this trench line. And uh, how do you prepare mentally for it? Like, because it's like hard work, like bloody work. And you have like have to have like be ready for it in your head well very very interesting question i can answer maybe for a few hours at least because i uh i'm doing psychology before uh maybe from 20 years now i'm 31 and uh, i try to find a way how to, uh, about uh, mind control and uh, emotions control and mind discipline so many soldiers have their own uh, secrets and uh, i try to put this uh like uh, my previous knowledge to to the, to the war uh and especially for preparing because this is about motivation and this is about how the, how you feel your life and maybe your last feeling your life actually because sometimes it's like going to work uh you know sometimes you have mood and you 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 can you realize that okay i'm gonna i'm gonna like Fuck them all, you know. All all clients is mine. All money is mine. I can do it. But sometimes you have no mood for to go into work, uh, to work, and to war as well. And uh, sometimes, especially when you have no this mood for storm operation, it's the the hardest things. But because no one can motivate you, and uh, you feel so frustration, and uh, only it's only depends on you how how creative you you help your mind to to find this this, this inner strength so uh, i have different uh, kind of motivation I, i'll show you maybe three or four so sometimes when uh, when i should go to mission and uh, it's very dangerous uh, sometimes liberating my my land from from fucking invaders is motivate me like highest I should liberate my land from inv invaders. Period. Uh, sometimes I can I can remember those uh, children which I which I met on rotation in Kiev who live in peaceful, and I understand that only me myself and my fellows, my combat my combat fellows, can stand between them and those evil who came from Russia to destroy them. So if if we can't stand, if we just be afraid or weak for this, so who who will do this job? Like nobody, and uh, it's like shame to be frustrated in in such scenario. And uh, sometimes, uh, like uh, you know, yeah, some people call me like w romantic because I can I can imagine this that uh, this is very legendary time my friend really legendary time and this is honor to to be in ukrainian and live in this country and have opportunity to fight for what you really believe in and uh even even in case you die in the battle this is the highest honor that uh, that can 
be like blessed to men, you know, just just be, being given to any man who respect themselves. And some and the force it's like um, like strong aggression, you know, like some guy push you and you you just say, what the hell? No, it's my boundary. You can't touch me. And uh, le- le- let's let's do it. And uh, it's like this aggression, motivation, like before gym or before sports, before fight. And uh, it depends on mood, which which mood you have in your head. Uh, you, you you should pick because s- some of them will affect you, and some of them you will you will think about them, and it, it doesn't affect on your mind. And sometimes just good music, you know, <laughs> different music. Uh, what well. kind of music you're listening to then? Uh, sometimes it's any kind of opera or maybe uh, oh, really? Andrea Bocelli. You know, sometimes it's uh, like hard rock, maybe Ramstein. Sometimes Ramstein. Ukrainian music. Sometimes Eminem. It, dep- it depends. Depends. Like, okay. So it's yeah. like not that one single genre. No, no. You always you always must be flexible uh, to find a way to find a better way to affect on your on your mind. Mind. This is, yeah, but this is only my answer. Uh, different yeah, of course. will will answer will answer you in different way. Yeah, that's. But I think like, I, a lot of people are using music as a medium for this. I think because like I saw saw a lot of documentaries about it. Like there's a science behind it actually to use music in war. Yeah. And like as you said, Rammstein and like this more heavier stuff. Like I know that the U.S. soldiers in Iraq did it pretty heavily. Like in the Second Iraq. They were like driving the tanks and like listening to like heavy metal music, and yeah, so yeah. I can. I saw this that, video and it's incredible. Yeah, it, it can get you pumped up like really quick, and uh, it's like very interesting because this is also a thing like people don't think about when like they talk about think about war. Like it's all this fighting, and they think it's like looking like in a video game. Even if this is also not the case, like the video game tries to look like what you experience, not the other way around. So. Yeah. I find it always important to mention that and like thank you very much for your insight on this and perhaps like we can speak about like you're currently in Kiev you said and you got wounded like can you tell us a little bit about this if it doesn't is too personal because I can guess it's one of the most personal things that can happen to one so would you like how did you get wounded how was it for you it's uh, it's pretty simple I'm storm in storm infantry so i uh, i received for for four months like five con- contusion it's a tbi traumatic brain uh, uh, this stuff and uh yeah after five uh, i can't uh, proceed fight anymore at least for now so uh, i need some medicine and some uh some relaxation but so right now i'm in hospital but uh, i find some sometimes to came to this meeting because uh, it's it's pr- pretty interesting and, and important as well to, to do. Yeah, this. I, I believe it as I well. So, and I'm really thankful for this opportunity because like everyone like talks about you so much, especially like under the shadow of the current ongoing counter offensive, like everybody like has an opinion about like how you guys fight. And like, I'm more of like, let's talk to them before like we talk about them. So that's really great for me. Like, and how do you, perceive your efforts in the counter offensive currently like of course like it's going on slow but you make progress like it's not that's like a total failure you make progress every day step by step piece by piece and how is your motivation currently to keep on this fight because you must have like this motivation i think but perhaps from you you mean you mean the whole brigade motivate yeah yeah okay uh as as i told you before we have uh we have highly motivated guys and we well prepared so yeah it's it's very diff it's very difficult to do it in such condition when they have airplanes uh, as well and everything with mind and uh, uh, mines everywhere there it's crazy but still uh you see we not not nothing change the Russians still on Ukrainian land, and uh, our people still like prisoners on our land under Russian occupation. So, like, uh, okay, no- nothing changed. We-, we continue until till we can, until we we finally liberate. How are you guys? Uh, you know, sometimes it feels like a surrealistic dream. 
land. That's all. We have fallen brothers, you know, and uh, we really angry for our enemy for that. Uh, some of our guys still uh, from Mariupol, they in prisoners in Russia. So some civilians still as prisoner and uh, our land after occupation. Uh, we we have we have like infinity motivation we on our land you know and uh, this is like the, the best way to to show how we motivate and it's just liberate our land and uh, win this war. Very nicely said, and it's like not only you who are doing this. Like there are a lot of foreigners coming to Ukraine. Like they can come to Kiev to help. They're either be it fighting or doing humanitarian work. So do you work with foreigners before? And how was your perception of them? How do you think about them? They are uh, they are very uh, motivated. They they want to help us. And uh, they uh, are those kind of uh, people who who can't uh, sit in, in their peaceful country and uh, just uh, watch through the through the phone and through the video how terroristic country try to invade uh, like uh, demo democratic Ukraine and uh, tr try to take our land and take our lives. So uh, they are um, guys with really high spirit and uh, those guys who who fight bad guys, you know, it's, it's like in blockbuster. <laughs> so they integrate very well, like within your ranks. So there is yeah. like, sometimes I believe there are like communication problems, but overall, like it's all working well with them together. And you highly respect them. Like you have them in high regard, hold them in high regard. And perhaps like and many of them had like prior military experience, like from different wars, but like these wars were different. Had they also like to learn new things with you together and perhaps to unlearn old things because like things can be very different, like in the way you fight wars, like they have before. Yeah, exactly. Even even we should uh, learn many new things. At least, for for example, I can compare my experience uh, from two thousand fifteen, and now it's it's very different. I can't compare even uh, this Bakhmut operation when our brigade fight uh, from uh, from New Year, approximately from New Year, on this direction. And we fight uh, without rest on here, and uh, we can't compare even even this battle to previous year. What 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 was year before? Because it it was pretty different. We saw this uh, infinity Wagner's attack, the the mid grinder attack. We saw this uh, Z storm Z, this prisoners. And um, we saw so much, so different uh, strategy and the combination of uh, combat mission. So uh, yeah, for sure, uh, foreigners with us uh, learn and study and should study fast to 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 win this battle. And like, what kind of personal traits like you think somebody should have who would like say, okay, I volunteer for this? Like, I would go there, like be it humanitarian aid or like be it even fighting, like what kind of person he should be and what should he bring with him? Like, should he, because I think everybody who's planning this should like really carefully think it throughout. But like, what's your opinion? So what kind of person one should be? I'm sure that uh, it must be those kind of uh, person who who just can't, uh, can't stay away, you know, can't just uh, walk by. Those uh, who fight for uh, for valuable things, for for some 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 good things in this earth. So yeah, this is those guys who don't let uh, fight, you, you know, people and who 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 will try to break this fight and stop it, or who try to prevent some criminal action, or uh, it must it must be some. Some guys or girls, maybe as well, because girls also fight uh, on the battlefield. Who, yeah, who, who had this inner feeling that something wrong happened, and uh, I can affect on this. That's that's all. This is the main. The, this is the most important because, um, okay, after after that, it's physical. Uh, 
uh, physical opportunity how how strong you are but it's uh believe me it's not the 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 most important thing the motivation is the is the is the highest high priority of uh, uh like uh, of skill which you which you must have yeah i believe that you're very right with this i think often also when it comes like to physical abilities like these things are just like a checklist on like your list you have should have yeah. and then there are many other things like you should bring and i found it like what you just said very interesting because like you mentioned women like that women are fighting with you and like first of all it's interesting that like they fight with you but for me personally i think it's no problem like if a woman can do a job then she can fight with you but many people don't believe this they say like women should stay away from the front line well i'm not this type of person who thinks this because i think women can be very helpful like be it like in medic roads, like they can calm people down very well. And so what would you like to say to those guys who say women should stay away from the front? Like what 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 we would like to tell them? Come to the front line and take them themselves back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Read that like evacuation from the front can actually be late, quite delayed some quite some time. That sometimes it can take up to 12 hours to get the to start the evacuation. Like, is this number correct? So is it, or if it was correct, is it still that way that it sometimes can take much time to get someone off the front if he gets injured, like from point of injury to like the operation table, for example? I see. Uh, it depends for, uh, if we speak about the whole armed forces, yeah, maybe it can even take a few days. Okay, that's like a... Because sometimes it's just it's a harsh time. Impossible, yes. Yeah. Person mm -hmm. under under missile, under artillery, uh, under airplane and helicopter attack, not day and night. But most of the time, our brigade is pretty successful as well because we, yeah, our evacuation guys, uh, they really crazy and fearless, and they can they can take your wounded ass from the battlefield as soon as possible and uh, we really uh, thanks them because this is you should go there and back and and still and stay alive and uh, take wounded guys it's it's crazy but but most of the time we did it uh, and pretty and uh, very very successfully that's good to know and good to hear so and you lose like some western gear as well in your brigade like what for me you are famous for are like the M1113 APCs, like you use them a lot in the videos. So, and they're like pretty old. They're like as old as in BMP1, I think. But what's your overall... And I think when the West sent it to you, many people were like, what are they sending? What's this? But I think they were like performing way better than many people thought. So what's your talk on these like APCs you ride into battle? It's okay. It's okay. It can do the yeah, work, let's, right? Let's start. It's okay, but it's also not for our grant, I can say, because uh, it's uh, for more solid ground and uh, not for this... Uh, Muddy terrain. Yes, it's it's sometimes it's very hard to, to use them and uh, sometimes we must walk by our feet. We can't use them. But still, most of the time, it's pretty cool vehicle. We like and, them. Yeah, yeah, because like it's like so old, and but I still I think it can do the job. But of course, like a Mordor or a Bradley would be way better for you. Like, and I hope you would get these. But uh, still, too interesting to hear like your point on it. Like I said, to what extent like the element of tactical surprise has fallen apart because of drones? Like I usually. See, yeah. Like usually you learn like to use your terrain pretty well. You can navigate and use the terrain against your enemy like that you can maneuver on them pretty well. So you can create some sort of surprise or ambush for them. But like through drones, like they are pretty omnipresent. They are always there. So how has this impacted the way you do things? You see sometimes right now war uh, remind me this... Uh twisted game on people's life because 
you can see live uh, translation of uh, your group storming the three lines and you can see how it happened from many drones so yeah as, as as you mentioned before it's not so easy to create some ambush or make some surprise and you should think about uh how to be invisible, especially at daylight or at least at night as well, because uh, we and the enemies has this thermal vision drones. Everything's changed, and sometimes you should act aggressively, and you you uh, you realize that uh, your uh, like team is visible for enemy, but you still should do in, do what you gotta do. That's all. Uh, like infantry fight. It's it's not disappeared, but it's yeah, it's, of course. it's become more like showing off, and uh, our side and enemy can can see what's going on there. It's like big theater. It's like Coliseum in Rome. Yeah, but and and we realize that the enemy is drawn. We can't do nothing, and the enemy know where we are, how to ambush or surrender us. Uh, but we we must do what what we're gonna do. That's all. Uh, but it's it's it become very very dangerous being in infantry. Yeah, I, so like as you mentioned, like the big Colosseum, does this have like also influenced like the way you perceive OPSEC? Like because like you share a lot, and like back then, like usually militaries don't show at all, and like but now like you can the Russians can't see anyway. Like in most yeah. cases, so it's you can share it simply. Like it sometimes this influences the decision as well. Interesting, very interesting. And perhaps like now I would go to some user questions because I promised the guys that they can ask questions. And okay, here the first question is like, like, do you get regular rotations from the front? And like, how long are they? Mm, I can speak about uh, about rotation, but uh, sometimes, yes. Yes, but okay. we, and we, we want more, believe, believe it or not, we want more rotations. Yeah, of course, like it's better like to, to rest and like perhaps even yeah. like to, yeah. to transfer knowledge, like because like knowledge is a huge factor. You learn a lot like on the front, like you learn more than anybody else has ever learned, like since World War II perhaps even. So yeah. like your your experience is very valuable like to others and like it's better to that as much as you guys survive as possible. Like also f that's what I think for like Western fighters, that like because like even NATO is very good like they're very strong they're very capable but they lack also like things like in terms of practical knowledge in this kind so it's good to have the people who go fight there come back alive so they can also transfer this knowledge to other people and like then I have a similar question that's what could go well with this like currently everybody watches you admires you and takes inspiration from you like from your fight. And who are like the guys or the militaries besides your own guys? You are like watching the, like this and taking inspiration from and perhaps admiring. You mean from from where we take inspiration? Yes, for example, yes. Like uh, we don't need such kind of inspiration. Uh, mm -hmm. We have motivation, but yeah, sometimes from different military movies. Uh, we take some something maybe our military gear from from movies about uh, United States special forces or stuff like that. It's it's very individual, uh, but we uh, mo my answer that we have motivation. It's stronger than inspiration. Yeah, that's that's a good answer, I think. And one user asks. Like, what it's like to taking, like, the Russian POVs? How do you feel? What, because one thing, taking them out, and one thing, capturing them. So what? how do you feel about capturing them if you get some to get? Because you capture them frequently. Like, nearly every video, there are Russian POWs. So how do you, do you feel about this? First of all, first of all, I want to say that it's... Uh... It's a very difficult uh, thing to take prisoners on the battlefield yeah. because even even this uh, one Russian soldier in trenches, he, he can throw a grenade to you or just uh, take a K and shoot your group. So it it's very dangerous. This is first that you you, sh you should know about taking prisoners, and uh, second, uh, you know. 
uh, first feeling at least first time i remember when prisoner was so close and he just put his hands up uh and uh, i just i just had one desire to finish finish him immediately without any regrets and just just get rid of this trash but then immediately ca- calmed down and uh, realized that many our guys still prisoners on their side and uh, we must take them and uh, change them uh so it's and the emo speaking about emotion it disgust uh, looking in 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 their face how they look like and uh, what the hell on earth push them to conquer our land and don't let us uh, live in our normal civilian life many mixed emotions but uh, as i mentioned before most of them that they tell you already and sometimes like do you feel sometimes like pity for them because i believe like you are constantly under artillery fire there and i believe the russians also shooting like at their own prisoners like when you capture them so they they don't care about them at all and do you sometimes then pity them for this like for this fact or do you don't care at all um maybe it will be very like personal answer only my answer not like, yeah of course i mean like your not only vision of my yeah, no 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 only your take everything's your take okay okay so it's... my my personal que- answer i i never felt uh, pity to them uh n- no i all i always uh, sure that you have a choice always and uh, when they they was just such a loser they can't kill us and now they are prisoners that's all so how can i change my emotion from uh, okay i should survive against this great creature to okay uh, i'm sorry i don't mean to be rude but let's let's go to our prison no fuck no uh, no no regret to them but still we are more civiliz- civilized uh, people than there we are not such creature and uh, yeah we we can control our emotion and don't kill them just just take them and do you believe that perhaps you will ever be it will ever be possible again for you like to give a russian the hand like after the war if the war is over like that you perhaps forgive them not forget but forgiving them for what they did is there a possibility or do you say no i'm finished forever with this nation speaking gener- generally okay every war is uh, finished eventually but uh, well, not for you exactly you can personally uh, no no of uh, but yeah i respect but, that but, but, but you see uh, you see it's uh, uh, i can separate i don't hate like all russian because uh, like the whole russia i I hate ma- many people of them who silently accept the uh, this fucking Putin and the, all the government and they support war. But uh, uh, I know guy guys Russian who support Ukraine who who fight uh, with us. They also guys from Russia, and uh, I don't hate them all. But in general, no, uh, I don't. I don't want to forget them, and uh, I don't see the way how I'm gonna shake them. Uh and say forgive and forget no i can understand that i I can understand for me like for me personally like i have nothing against like for serbians for example they were was war with us and i have nothing against them because i was basically a child when the war was so and the new generation is totally different but i totally can understand you here so it's a bit sad on one way but on the other hand like if it's your your stance everybody has to respect that so i'm fine with this so uh, I tried to search for questions I haven't already asked myself. Uh-huh. Okay. This one is interesting. On general, like sometimes you stay you stay in the trenches, like if you have to, to secure the area, like and it can happen. Do you sometimes sleep in the trenches yourself? Like the Russians do, like they sleep in the trenches. But you, if you capture them, sometimes you stay there for a longer period of time and sleep in them yourself. And how long do you stay in general in a trench? Uh, you mean sleep in their trenches? Yeah, if you capture, like, like yeah. you capture a trench, for example, and then you hold on this area, like, yeah, yeah. And do you sleep in these trenches? And how long do you t- t- stay in them sometimes? 
Yeah, we 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 must leave, we mm-hmm. must stay them because when when we take their position, we have no time to dig uh, another trenches, and uh, we should use them to hide from artillery. And uh, sometimes it's it can be maybe a few days, for example, we can stay in the trenches full of trash. Actually, they... it can be very smelly. I think. Yeah, like, because of uh, because of dead body, for example, or yeah, especially in summer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's very hard. I can, yeah, I can guess that. Like, it's not not no nice thing to witness. No. no. And well, there are like a lot of trenches. Like there is this whole bunch of dug out trenches scattered all across the area, and not all of them are meant all the time. But just because like a trench is empty doesn't mean that it isn't dangerous. Like there's always the risk like of booby traps or IEDs. Like do you encounter them a lot? Yeah, we must be very, very careful, especially when taking some trophy weapon and the... they mm, they set up traps. Yes, um, yes. That's interesting. We have many problems with this these traps, but we have no choice. Sometimes we should uh, hide and, in artillery, and we use them. That's all. And how do you like look for these traps? Like, per, uh, you don't use like dogs, for example. Like Western militaries oh. often use like working dogs to detect like booby traps. Like this is it just not possible for you, or why do you don't use them? Or doesn't doesn't make much sense in this special like event, like under these conditions, to deploy dogs? Because you should take dogs to this assault operation, and I it's don't. Hard. It's uh, it's maybe it's possible, but you don't think it's feasible. Rare. Perhaps it's good. Yeah, yeah. Mm, okay, I was just thinking about because I think it can be very hard. Like even if you can train dogs very well to like be calm under fire, but like still, it's another nuisance we have to carry along around with you. Like, but like I think they could be very helpful, like in detecting like mines and stuff, and uh, IDs booby traps. And how well do you think these trenches and dugouts are tactically placed? Like, are they placed with with a sense, or they just randomly dug, dug them? So without like thinking about it, they they have some time to prepare. Yeah. So there's a system behind it, like they they covering each other, and this makes it also hard to advance sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. And like. What do you think how they feel like when they are like often it's like the case that you isolate them in like one single duckout and then there are perhaps two or three Russians inside and you tell them to surrender. Sometimes they surrender, sometimes they won't come out and you throw grenades. What do you think they feel like being cornered that way? Uh, I don't know how this like creature feeling what like, they think. What brings them not to surrender, I think, because often they don't surrender, even if like they are outnumbered, outmaneuvered, and every logical decision would be okay. My life is what more. I, I give up, but they don't. Sometimes they blow themselves up even. Like, how? what do you think? Like, why are they doing this? Man, I really don't know. Sometimes they think that their life ain't available at all. So sometimes they are not logic uh, creatures. Sometimes they they are under propaganda that maybe we can brainwash some of them. And uh, sometimes it can be million way how to how to answer on this question. I don't know exactly. So perhaps another question would be from one user is how do you feel like about F sixteen fighter jets? Like, would they help you? Sure. Like, would they make an actual? But the the discussion is about like. I know that they will make an impact, like they will definitely help you. But it's same like with the Leopard 2 tanks. When they sent you the Leopard 2 tanks, everybody was like accepting that this was this huge game changing weapon that will roll through like the front line and it didn't happen. And like people say that with F-16, it can happen as well, but you still find it's necessary to have them. Like you would very likely have them. I'm hundred percent. I hundred percent sure it's necessary for us, especially yeah, to me too. Fight, fight them in the ear. Because they plane, fly, and do any anything they want. They drop missile on the city in the rear, and they they attack our front line, and they stop our attack sometimes uh, by their plane. But uh, while we have F sixteen, of course, 
Of course, we should fight as as infantry and walk by our feet all these trenches and clean them up. But still, F-16 is... It will be very helpful. Yeah, very helpful. Like for me, it's like a necessity. Uh, like it's necessary to have them in the first place if you want to do this kind of operations NATO, NATO wants you to do. Because they want you to fight this war in a way of like this combat arms breaches. And like... But at, at the same time, like they denied you basically the means to it. Like even if you have like Heimers, you have like Leopards, but still I think air cover is a necessity. Not even that it must work, but you must have it in the first place to effectively employ this, I think. Yeah. So good that people can listen to your stance on this. And I pretty much share your same opinion. Like I think you should get them, but it will be hard like to get pilots for it and stuff. What do you think the pilot issue and the language issue, will it be, can it be solved quickly? Yeah, yeah, we study pretty well. I again, think so too. Again, because of motivation and because uh, we are a soldier who can surprise uh, maybe any country in the world because yeah, you of have. our you yes, have. You how, have, like... how fast how fast we learn any different weapon, no matter which country send us. Sometimes we receive some anti tank uh, stuff uh, to the battlefield, and we just read instruction while enemy tank driving on us it's a real story man uh, it was very crazy stuff when my fellow tried to read instruction when i in in sniper rifle and say just fucking destroy this uh, armored vehicle and he say i try okay step first second third try to shoot doesn't work okay ah uh, it's step six all right when when he he shoot and destroyed and so it was some kind of czech republic uh, uh, uh weapon or i don't know exactly but we study even during battle so i don't think it's going to be a problem with F f16 or language barrier it's like a lot learning by doing i think and one theory is always one thing like you can be as good as you want in theory reality is always like different like it will always not work out that way you want it. So, but I hope that you will get them in the near future. Okay. After you said, like you said that uh, you would like to have way more rotation, like in general, I think it depends, but perhaps from you, how, how long does it take till you get the rotation? Yeah, hold on, maybe seven days. Oh, seven days. Then you can get off some time off the front. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, approx, approx, maybe for you understand, maybe for, once in half a year. Ah, okay. Well, that's like seven, quite a time. That's like quite a time. It's different. It's different. But man, you have so much task when you return to your home to do. So you yeah. have time to have the rest. Time, the time flies. Like yeah, but it's so flies. available and so it's so desire. It's always so desire to receive yeah. it these seven days. Yeah. And then you try to to like make it make as much of it as possible i guess like enjoying life and stuff and yeah. even sometimes like you get like disrupted with this like i saw a video on your instagram you were having like pizza with your friends or your sister and then there was a russian attack and even just yes. they deny you sometimes so oh, you saw this video as well <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I think this this made you angry. Like, perhaps, what of the Russian weapon systems you encounter are the ones that like make you the most angry? Like, is, is it being under artillery fire? Is it like the drones that are hovering above you? Like, which kind of Russian soldier you despise the most? Uh, wow, it's very it's very di I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because. When you, you see, when you in storm infantry, you in freaking epicenter of the hell because like everything is thrown at you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's uh, FPV drones, these kamikaze drones, Lancet, it's tank artillery, it's uh, uh, helicopters, aviation, these mines, uh, these booty mines, uh, and uh, sh shooting from from guns, everything against you and. You can separate. You can separate. Maybe phosphor phosphorus, which flies oh, yeah. from, from the air. Maybe even uh, this uh, gas, which can, you know, this uh, uh, this poison gas when they use as well. 
You use they use many, it well? Yeah, many, many different things that can make you feel very angry to Russian. So there's not like for example, like man, I hate these artillery guys or I hate these drone operators. You just don't like any of them. So any of them should be gone. It, it, uh, it's it's very uh, also a very individual. But uh, most of for, for me, uh, tank I hate I ha- I hate tanks like the most because they shoot so fast and they run away so fast and so precisely. Yeah. So, but again, then I remember a uh, helicopters attack and this is this is crazy. Then I remember aviation attack and this is so. I can't answer on this question. And like you said in the beginning that you were also hunting for tanks, like which kind of tanks you got, like what have you destroyed so far? Like from what you know, like T-72, perhaps even a T-90, like some higher end gear. I was, uh, it was very, very diff- difficult uh, operation because I wasn't so lucky. I wasn't uh, on place on the war. Uh, when they fight from four or five kilometers and run away. And I was with Javelin with a 2.5 kilometers distance. But uh, yeah, one one storm I destroyed from Enlau, this armored vehicle with a huge machine gun. Uh, so it was BMP. Uh, BMP2? BMP2, yeah. Two, yeah, two, two. Okay. yeah. So, this, so you never like hit a T90 or, or like no, a BMP3? No. Sadly, I think, you, and like how, like if you have an analog with you, like sometimes are you happy if you see a vehicle in range? So you think, yeah, I have an analog, I can get this one now. Like, does it pumps you up? You, you see, when when I destroyed that vehicle, I was like a second time I saw this analog, and then mm-hmm. I, I have only one shot because we have only AK and no no weapon and at all, and uh, I have only this one analog. That's all. So if I miss this uh, huge uh, armor vehicle from this machine gun, big caliber, we'll problem. Yeah. it will destroy us all. So uh, so we were pressured, like if we were very much under pressure. Because I yeah. can't believe that some people might like have a little bit of joy if they like know they have this vehicle, they see it, they know they are in range, and the vehicle doesn't notice you, so you're pretty much uh, an easy kill. I but never like, been in such situ- situ- situation. Okay, okay. I can like I, yeah, okay, yeah. interesting to hear it from you, right? Because yeah, so. and yeah, perhaps one more. last yeah one minute. Perhaps one last question, if you can. Okay. How do you feel about other people like sharing your footage so much online? Are you okay with this? So are you happy, or sometimes you like? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Especially when they when they save my uh my name and uh, so say who is author of this video. Yeah, I'm really appreciate. I thank you guys very much because this is really my legacy. I'm. Uh, I know that if I die on the battlefield, uh, I can I can left something very valuable after me. So thank you very much. And I thank you very much for like doing what you do and for sitting here and speaking to me. I will link like your social media under the video so like people can check you out there. And I hope it was interesting for you. For me, it was very interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing this online. So thank you very much, man. Sure, beyond touch, bro. Stay safe and perhaps we stay in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye.